Hey there guys, Gamer Jamie Triple One here and today I am going to be doing a reaction video to um Farewell Sarah Jane. Now I used to be a huge fan of the Sarah Jane Adventures because I was still um still in my early teens when it first came out so well the late pre-teens early teens when it first came out and i have completely and utterly loved it ever since um now i knew that um liz sladen passed away in 2011 before um the full series five i think it was um could be finished filming um but i did not know that for the ninth anniversary of her passing that they did this <clears throat> i I knew they were probably going to do something for the 10th anniversary, probably to basically end her story officially within the um, Doctor Who universe. I did not know that they were going to do it for the 9th, although it did make sense to have some sort of content from Doctor Who for the anniversary since it was during the first national lockdown in England so I suppose it does make a little bit of sense to but let's get into it and hopefully I don't cry very much Oh god, because when I found out about Liz dying, I I broke down in tears completely and utterly and I can still remember that now, <laughs> nine and a half years later. Um, she, she was the first Doctor Who companion. That I completely fell in love with. You know, she was my favourite companion. Um, just going off school reunion alone. Um, and then for her to get her own spin-off show just shows how much power that this... I think at the time she was in her mid to late 50s you know, how much power this mid to late 50 year old lady had on a child, a child based audience because her show was on the children's network and I don't think it ever ever went below half a million viewers and I think in the last um, last three stories, I think it actually went over a million viewers. So that's how much power she had. And it's so sad that she ultimately ended up not... <clears throat> not exactly um being around long enough to fully bow out the show in a full-blown everything thrown at it finale but and that's the unfortunate part anyway let's get into this 
Right. Three, two, one, go. Sounds really it low. Was a lovely service, and everyone came. Luke, Clyde, and Rani looked around the room. So many people. It was a bright, cold spring day. Sunlight shining through the tall windows of the reception room, and the guests sat on chairs, and on the floor, and in the corridor, and outside on the lawn. All smiling. All sad. All gathered to remember Sarah Jane. Luke said hello to the soldiers from unit, and the brigadier's daughter gave him the biggest hug. Clyde chatted with the nice couple from Australia, Tegan and Nissa. And then Ben and Polly, who'd come from India. Then Ian and Barbara from Cambridge. And then Martha and Mickey with their son Orville. Oh! A woman called... They've got a son. Okay. Cambridge. And then Martha and Mickey with their son August. A woman called Dodo said hello, and so did Dr. Holloway, and Liz Shaw, and someone called Victoria, and Sky manifested briefly in her human form. Uh -huh. Captain Jack stood at a distance, and saluted, <coughs> and then turned away. Maria and her dad smiled down from a video screen. They'd missed their plane, too busy chasing a banderol through Seattle, but they laughed and joked with everyone, and then Maria cried, and her father hugged her. But Rani stood back. She was polite and smiling. She watched everyone and everything, but Rani didn't say much at all. Once the wonderful speeches and glorious songs were done, everyone broke up into little groups. Tall, handsome waiters gave out drinks and sandwiches. The guests told stories and swapped tales. There was laughter and tears. But really, a sense of joy, huge joy, in remembering a life well lived and well loved. There was also a quick little ten minutes where the tall, handsome waiters turned out to be jackals of the backwards clock. No, of course. Of trickster, <laughs> who materialized in a blaze of dark light with a plan to swap planet Earth with a vile copy from the septic dimension. But all the guests joined forces to shrink the trickster to the size of a doll and lock him in a treasure chest at the bottom of the Atlantic for the next thousand years. And then the party went on. But time passed. And people had to go. They all swapped numbers and promised to meet up every year. They'd call themselves the Family Smith. And then Luke, Clyde, and Rani stood by the door to say goodbye to everyone as they left. First of all, Joe Jones came up to them and said, Well, my darlings, I'm sorry, but I, I really do have to. Ah! Oh, wasn't it wonderful? Oh gosh, and I'm really sorry about breaking that vase. <laughs> oh, you know, I loved her so much. She really was such a special, special girl. <laughs> and I've been thinking, I know you're all waiting for the doctor to turn up, but come on, he couldn't, could he? I mean, he's got two hearts. Imagine them both breaking. Oh God. I don't think he could Anyway, he's probably off, I don't know, saving some asteroid from a giant squid or something. <laughs> well, that's it. Now I truly, truly have to go. Oh, where's Rio de Janeiro? Uh, no, <laughs> not the city, my granddaughter. Although, if I can't find my glasses, oh gosh, I probably can't find the city either. <laughs> anyway, this really has to be goodbye. And remember, <coughs> I love you all so much. I really, really do. <laughs> Take care, my darlings. And off she went. Gita and Haresh had missed all the business with the trickster because she'd brought sausage rolls for the buffet, but she'd lost the plate and went to the kitchens to cause a right old fuss, demanding it back. But now Gita came up to them. Of course she would. What a lovely day. I couldn't understand half of it, but she was a funny woman. <laughs> I used to 
to get all tense to begin. Not sure I fancy that. But I tell you what about Sarah Jane. She was your best friend. You three. <laughs> when she were kids, back then. You should have been going out, having parties and going into town and hanging around the parks and things. <laughs> but you stayed. All the time. With her. And I used to think that says something about Sarah Jane Smith. It says that she was a remarkable and the streets very quiet without her. So well Dieter left. And then Dorothy McShane gave them all a big hug and said. I just wanted to say, Ace. The doctor once said, <laughs> "Long time ago now, we were trapped on this prison planet, run by these giant mechanical prawns, and we sat in the dark. And the doctor went all quiet and full of memories, like like he sometimes did. And he said, I miss her." Out of all the people in this whole wide universe, I miss Sarah Jane. And then, years later, I met her. We had that adventure with the Diamond Wolf Clan. And the Doctor was right. Again. <coughs> because I miss her. I will miss Sarah Jane for the rest of my life. And Dorothy said goodbye, taking K9 with her. And everyone made their farewells until it was just Luke, Clyde, and Rani, the old gang. And they talked about Sarah Jane. And Clyde said, Ah, uh, she was all right. <laughs> and they laughed. <laughs> but then he said, I could have been nothing. You know, just one of those boys bad at school. <laughs> Full of terrible jokes. Too cheeky for his own good. Just scribbling silly cartoons, but it's like Sarah Jane looked through the crowd and she saw me. She saw what I could be. He still looks so young. I wish I told her how much I love that kid. I love him with my whole heart. <laughs> How lucky it would be to have found her, eh? Yeah. She was the best. <laughs> the absolute best. Then Luke drove them back to Bannerman Road. And they talked about the terrible day they'd heard the news. Luke and Clyde both agreed. <coughs> <coughs> They'd all been out of the country at the time. Luke with UNIT in Geneva, Clyde as a guest of honour at the New York Comic Con, Rani at the North Pole reporting on Project Refreeze. So it felt like Sarah Jane had waited <laughs> until they were out of sight to save them any pain. <laughs> That's what Luke and Clyde said. But Rani sat in the back, still not saying much at all. They arrived on Bannerman Road and went into number 13. Remembering so many things that had happened in that house. So many amazing days, so much terror, and so many laughs. And then they went upstairs to say goodbye to Mr. Smith. The attic was the same as ever. Perhaps just a little dust began to settle. They called for Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith's voice was as calm and as formal as ever. Though even a supercomputer couldn't hide the sadness behind the words. Sarah Jane had left instructions. She had said that Bannerman Road should close down. Mr. Smith should be folded away in secret. And the house left to grow dark. Waiting. That's what Sarah Jane had said. Waiting for the next one. Waiting for its new owner. Waiting for the stories to begin all over again. And then when all was said and done. They simply had to go. 
Luke had equations to solve, Clyde had meetings about his silver bullet movie, and Rani was due to publish a scoop which would bring down the government. But they'd see each other on Christmas Day, like they always did. The best of friends forever. And then Luke said, I was so lucky, because I had the best mother in the entire universe. And that is a literal fact. She showed me the whole wide world. And I don't mean all the monsters and invasions and people made of smoke and vegetables. I mean the real world. She's the one who told me that Sanjay was looking at me in that way. And she is the one who told me to go and talk to him. And now we've been married for five years. That's the greatest gift she ever gave me. I may have been created by the Bane, but Mum... She gave me life. The other two smiled. And Luke hugged Clyde, and then Rani, and the boys stood off. Rani looked around. She tidied a few stray books. She turned off one light, then another. Then she put Mr. Smith into his close-down sequence. And as the timer ticked away, before Mr. Smith folded himself into the dark, Rani stood in the doorway. And she thought, and then Rani said, Do you know what I think? I think it's not over. Because... I don't think she's dead. I really don't. That's not just me being mad. Because I honestly think, in my heart and soul, that he came back for her. Right at the end, the doctor came back for her. One last trip. Yeah. And she said, Oh, yes, please. <laughs> and I think they're out there now. Sarah Jane and the Doctor in the TARDIS, traveling through space and time forever in a story that never ends. That's what I think. What about you? Yeah. Yes, Ronnie. I think so too. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Smith. Then uh. Ronnie closed the door and walked downstairs, went outside, locked the front door, and walked away. <clears throat> but it's still there. The house on Bannerman Road. Just waiting. I think that's everything. Well, that was definitely <coughs> amazing, um, and a perfect way for Sarah Jane. Mm. To be written out of the show officially. Hopefully, um, hopefully Chibnall does not try to bring this up. Please, for the love of God, don't bring it up. You know this is absolutely gorgeous. Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, and Chimnall 
should stay the hell away from me because if he undoes this then there is going to be an absolute uproar for this <clears throat> But, um, <laughs> oh, and this was so beautiful. And to have Katie Manning come back as Joe, <laughs> um, Clyde come back. Luke and Lani <laughs> was amazing and then a small cameo from Ace Sophie Aldridge um, it's just amazing it just shows how how far a reach Sarah Jane go. Oh God. And <clears throat> <clears throat> it just shows how much of an impact that she had on so many lives. And honestly, I don't think just one doctor came back. Mm. I reckon every single one did. 13 boxes lined up outside the house. And they all said goodbye by taking her on one last trip each oh i'm so sorry um <laughs> i know the one that she will have loved the most was number four number ten and number eleven but <laughs> i've got a feeling that number twelve and thirteen were going to be her favorite because she <laughs> may have had the youthfulness of being able to keep up with David Tennant and Matt Smith when she met their doctors but she would not have taken anything from Capaldi's 12 absolutely nothing no not a thing if it needs be um, Clara may have said and you know tell me the truth or I'll smack you so hard you'll regenerate that was just a threat. Sarah would have actually done it. <laughs> oh, so um, thank you, Elizabeth Sladen, for being such a huge part of my childhood. Being Sarah Jane. And being the childhoods of so many children besides me. And I just want to say thank you so, so much. And I really wish I could have met you. I'm going to have to end it here before I start crying my eyes out again. <clears throat> oh. Um, if you've got any other 
Doctor Who videos that I can watch then please leave them down in the comment section below um if you've got any recommendations for any of the k-pop artists that i have reacted to then please leave them down in the comment section as well um by all means have a look at everything that i have put on my channel i react to k-pop i react to doctor who videos that i have not seen um and i um do gameplay videos as well at the moment i am um playing through the grand tour season three um in preparation for the release of the Madagascar special which is coming out on the 4th of December which is in just a few short days now <laughs> oh, I've got to stop thinking about Sahara because I'm just going to keep starting to cry <laughs> um, if you've got any other types of videos you would like me to watch them definitely leave them down in the comment section i am open to anything any show um any shows any um funny videos anything just leave them down in the comment section and i will get to them as soon as i possibly can um every reaction i am doing i am writing in here from k-pop songs to this video to other types of videos just please leave them down in the comment section they will all go into this book and they will all be reacted to as soon as possible but for now i am definitely going to go now i've been gamer jamie triple one this was this was farewell Sarah Jane and it really was a farewell I will see you in the next one bye